Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's time for another weekly update on what's going on with the S&P 500 earnings data. Uh, for those of you guys who are newer to the group, I do this. Uh, I try to do this every week, at least during the busy part of earnings season. Uh, this weekend, uh, this last week was uh, the last busy week of the of the current quarter. Uh, I may or may not put some more data up over the next uh, well, the following weeks after this and uh, between now and uh, July 1st. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but just at least want to give you guys an update on uh, how things are looking there across the index. Um, also, again, if you're new, earnings data is important to follow because it tells you uh, it's how we can value the index. What is it worth? Yeah, what is it actually trading for is one thing, but what is it actually worth is another thing. And the more we follow the earnings, the more we have an idea of what it, the price should be at based on the earnings alone. All right, so that's why I post this, and uh, so I try to keep you guys apprised of what's going on here across the index, and you have a little bit better idea, like the risk reward, what goes on with, uh, you know, if you want to be, uh, uh, if you're invested in the CS and iPhones, whatever. And you, you maybe uh, you're a little bit. If you ever have concerns, whatever, want to know about um, what's the likelihood that we're going to fall into a recession or something. And that's why I post these so you have a much better understanding of that. Uh, a lot of it's going to be over your head. That's okay. Uh, just put it. Uh, just put it uh, together one piece at a time, just like a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, just get one little piece here and there, put together, uh, connect it to other pieces. And then uh, eventually you have bigger pieces to work with and you put larger pieces with larger pieces and then you'll start to get a bigger comprehensive picture of what exactly this all means and why it's important. So don't don't worry if you if this some of it's uh, a lot of it's over your head. It is going to be Greek at first if you're new. Uh, I understand that. Just be patient. Don't expect that you're going to learn it overnight. OK, but just you can get you can still get kind of a, a general feel for what my thought is on what I post here and if I have a certain idea you know, like uh, uh, attitude or whatever or uh, uh, impression then it's you know, generally it should be a pretty safe bet that that's the that's going to be the right direction that yeah you know, I'm not always going to be right but you know the data doesn't lie and that's why I'm posting this all right uh, also, I will be uh, talking about some of the manufacturing and, S, uh, and uh, services uh, data that came out and uh, comes out every month. Uh, beginning of each month, I from the uh, Institute for Supply Management or ISM. I'm going to go ahead and include that into this uh, presentation because a lot of times when I post it on its own, uh, it tends to get ignored because I know it's, again, it's, it's over people's heads and they don't quite understand the the value of the information so uh, I'll put it in here and I'm also going to try to keep the the general presentation that I normally put in here shorter than normal now uh, that way I have time to explain a little bit more with those uh, ISM and PMI uh, the yeah those other economic reports uh, which I actually covers both for the US and for the uh, countries that are involved in the I fund um, so, yeah, and if you ever, if you're not really quite sure on some of the information you see here, there are previous posts for me, previous videos. Uh, you can find them on my YouTube channel or here in the group, or or in the group, Facebook group, whichever you happen to be watching through, and uh, you might be able to get some uh, some ideas from that, or you know, just read some of the some of my previous posts if you're in the Facebook group. Uh, general, you know, the more you read, the more likely you are going to be to pick up on some of this stuff and understand it. Uh, we're not here to spoon feed you, but I am here to help you uh, get a better understanding at least and be able to make more well-informed decisions regarding uh, on how to manage your own account. All right, so let's move on and we'll get to some of the, the meat and potatoes here, the, the data. Okay, something new I'm going to do this week with these presentations also is include my camera view in here. Uh, reason why is we do have some members in the group who are either deaf or hard of hearing, and some of them may be able to read lips, and, but cannot hear or something along that line. So I'll include this in here. So if you, if you, if you do have hearing uh, 
problems of some sort and um, you can read my lips uh, that'll help also if you're watching through the YouTube channel you just turn on your closed captioning and it should also dictate the uh, automatically what I'm saying into uh, into text for you okay so for us start off with um, what the the general summary uh, with the S&P 500 uh, right now the total market caps up in the 39 trillion dollar range uh, it's getting up there okay and then looking at my uh, my earnings info for both trailing and forward is projecting a 20.54 percent growth rate over the next year that's very strong that's that's kind of growth you don't want to be missing out on because when there's you know, growth that strong is you're going to have um, share prices uh, growing uh, corresponding to that in some way shape or form and that's that's very good growth you don't want to be missing that so stay in the stock funds as, as much as you can all right uh, my current value I, I will be updating the announcement post the main announcement post or hashtag main announcement that'll help you locate the post in question I always keep these price targets in that post, and you always yeah, well, you always have an idea on what to expect from the index over the next year or even in the short term. Uh, and the current value, uh, basically without any earnings growth factored in, uh, I estimated around 39.10. Uh, that would be its value. Uh, adding in that 20.54% growth rate, uh, it, it projects upward uh, to 47.10. Um, it, the index closed around the 42.25, 42.30 range on Friday. So uh, we still have a good almost 500 points of uh, growth exp uh, that can you know, be, we can reasonably expect over the next year. Or yeah, you know, as long as uh, as long as the earnings continue to meet or beat expectations and the, you know, the consensus expectations remain about the same, that's basically what will happen. Uh, they, the consensus can go up and down over time, but uh, generally, it's this is what it's projecting. All right, and then um, we're looking we're looking at almost 5,200 level on the S&P 500 for its price or what it could reasonably be hitting a year from today. Uh, that's quite a bit of growth. I did not do the numbers to compare what that 5,200 would be compared to today. Um, but it's it's very healthy growth again you don't want to miss it uh, this might slow down some later on but uh, again plenty of more growth to be had over the next year at least uh, at least we can expect or hope all right swing out target is for this mainly for those of you guys in the swing trader group but not so much for the the main group uh, on Facebook um, but Swing out target can help some of you guys out also who are in the main group and are buy and hold type uh, investors because it'll give you an idea of when to expect, uh, you know, when to reasonably expect a, perhaps a pause in the price growth. It doesn't, uh, the prices don't always go up, you know, long, uh, just constantly up and up and up. And if you think that is the case and uh, you get worried about drops, uh, it's time for you to start learning. Yeah, this is a roller coaster. It goes up and down, but it always goes up over the long term. Always up. It doesn't go down. Don't apply the traditional stock investing logic that can be applied to individual companies to a stock index fund like what we invest in with TSP. They are not yeah, not remotely the same. Uh, or, yeah, they, they do have some similarities, but a lot of the rules for individual stocks are not the least but any good for stock index funds all right so as long as you have an idea where to expect the pauses then you know if you see the price get up in that area don't be surprised if you see the price drop about three to five percent on a typical drop and then yeah it's just people taking profits and then waiting for the price to come back down to a more reasonable level and then they start buying back in it's just the ebb and flow of, of, of natural uh, upward progression all right, so 43.10 is what I'm currently projecting. Uh, as I mentioned, 42.30 is 42.25, 42.30 is what the index closed at on Friday. So we're less than 100 points away. Um, that's uh, again, I don't have the percentages. Uh, I'm not too concerned with it. Just keep watching the S&P 500. Do not watch the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's not a useful index for us. 
All of the Dow Jones Industrial Average stocks are also in the S&P 500, and the C-Fund follows the S&P 500. There's no good reason to really follow the Dow. It's not of any real use to us in the, at, at TSP. And no, the S-Fund the S does not follow the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It follows a different Dow Jones Index called the Dow Jones U.S. Total Completion Index. That can be tracked following uh, using the ticker D Delta Whiskey Charlie Papa Fox or DWCPF. Or if you're on Ameritrade, like on um, Thinkorswim platform, use dollar sign DWCPF, and that, that's the chart you can use. Um, so that's what you want to use for S Fund. Now, I can't really value the S Fund, no. It has over 3,000 stocks in it and less analyst coverage than all of the large companies in the S&P 500. CNS tend to have very good uh, overall correlation, so that's why I focus specifically on the S&P 500. It's easier to track what's going on with all the companies. It's easier to come up with an estimated value for the index. And if we know what goes on, what to expect from C-Fund, we generally know what to expect from S as well, to some degree or another. Sometimes S will outperform C, sometimes it will underperform, and we'll get to more of that later on here. All right, so right now also um, the beer ratio or the bond equity, uh, bond equity earnings ratio it's pointing at 95% stocks and 5% bonds. That is, uh, that's an increase. That's up a little bit more on the stock side now from what it was previously. Uh, it was at 90% stocks, 10% bonds. But we'll I will talk some more about the bond market uh, when we get to that slide. And uh, not to mention this, uh, this growth rate has accelerated from uh, 17, 18% uh, ish when I started the quarter to now 20.5%. So that's also factoring into why it's gone up to 95% stocks. Uh, as uh, For those of you guys who are a little more averse to risk, as a reminder, as bond yields rise or and or this percent expected growth drops, this is going to bias more and more toward the bond funds. And when that does happen, it'll be a more legitimate reason to uh, be, over, be in the bond funds, and by then, if a, if a recession does come, you'll already have more of your money in those in the bond funds anyway, and you won't have as much to, to worry about losing so much, uh, generally, okay? because uh, stock and bond funds usually tend to go in the opposite direction from each other. Not always, but they tend to. All right, let's move it on. Uh, now, uh, the price-to-earnings ratios... Uh, Sitting kind of high there, actually, and I have kind of uh, adjustment in there as well. So my numbers are going to probably differ from what you might see online if you guys follow S&P 500 PE ratios on other websites. Um, again, uh, it's a little on the elevated side there, um, but 25 forward PE, it's actually uh, reasonable, I would say, considering the growth rate that we have we're dealing with. Uh, typically, uh, a, a more normal um, growth you know, forward PE would probably be in the between 15 and 20 range, or somewhere in that ballpark. So when it's up uh, about 25, it means prices are definitely higher. But that's to be, again, it's to be expected with strong growth. All right, let's move on now to the next slide. Okay, so looking at the the forward quarters, or basically what we've already seen over the last two quarters. And then what to expect over the next four quarters, this is what I post in here. Uh, these numbers will kind of tell you what the, what the current value will start projecting up toward. It's, it doesn't have the adjustments in it like, that, uh, like the previous slide has. Uh, but the important thing we want to look at here, we still have strong growth expected, double digits over the next uh, three quarters ahead. We've had very strong growth this quarter. Uh, and it will probably slow down in four quarters from now. But, yeah, it's still decent. 3.56% is actually not bad at all for uh, for a single quarter. It's just, you know, when you have a, a very easy standard to compete against here, it's, this is how you get these larger numbers. And that's why uh, the more reasonable number there, or more average, I guess, uh, looks looks like it's very low and uh, that's a problem no it's not necessarily a problem um, same here uh, this is a little bit on the lower side here to be honest with you but it's again it's uh, 
that's just one piece of the whole picture there with what's going on with the broader earnings. So stronger, strongest growth is uh, what we just had this quarter or, you know, what we've had so far this quarter and uh, the quarter coming ahead in uh, July through uh, September or third quarter, if you will. And it'll slow down some from there. Okay, looking at the sector earnings data, for those of you guys who um, invest outside TSP, whether it be in an IRA account or a regular taxable brokerage account or anywhere else where you can invest in more than just stock index funds. This is why I have this info in here for you as an added benefit. Uh, that way, if you don't really know where to invest, you, maybe you want ideas on where to invest what money you have available. Uh, you're just not really sure where to put it. Well, this is meant to help you out. Where uh, whatever is at the top of that list is probably where you might want to focus on, uh, focus your attention on with that, uh, with that money. So right now, energy, consumer discretionary, and industrial sectors are the top three, followed by materials. Uh, again, I've talked about this before. Consumer discretionary, I always like to see up near the top. That, that's always a sign of a good, healthy economy. And utilities and consumer staples closer to the bottom is also a good indication of a healthy economy. You want to see those struggling, not or not doing as well as everybody else. When they're doing better than everybody else, that's a that's where you want to be more concerned. Uh, but we don't see anything of uh, of any real concern here. Also, uh, industrial sector specifically, transportation stocks are really really strong uh, expected growth. Um, you have a negative number here, but that's because of the way I calculate it. But if you look here, their trailing 12 info is currently negative 13. And it's uh, over the next uh, year, those same companies are going to project uh, $73. Or, yeah, add, uh, total. They add up all of their earnings together uh, without any kind of uh, um, market cap waiting or anything like that. They just add up like that. It's just kind of a general idea. Uh, where the strength is or where the weakness might be. Uh, and a lot of that strength here is from the airlines, very severely negative, uh, trailing 12, but they, and they're still expected to be uh, negative over the next 12 months, but not nearly as bad. And so, and that'll help the overall transportation number. Also, as I mentioned before, transportation stocks, when they are, when they're doing well, it's also another indication of a good, healthy economy. All right, so this is all, uh, these are all positive indicators here. All right, looking at the quarter to date data here, the very bottom, uh, I, had, I have updates from 429 of the 505 uh, stock symbols. 500 companies, 505 symbols, because five of those companies have two stock symbols in the index, uh, two share classes. Uh, which could be, you know, it's like uh, Discovery Communications, uh, Google, or Al Alphabet. Um, yeah, and then a few others. So, and not really too important there, just you know, for G Wiz, that's why sometimes you end up with more than 500. Uh, there are actually 505 stock symbols in the index. Uh, now, what's going on here? The very positive, see, over almost 77% of the entire uh, of the 429 that have reported updates already or that I have data from. Uh, have reported positive growth over the last year. So that's another really strong, that's another good, that's strongly positive compared to the rest of the numbers in here. And you'll get kind of an idea how high or low it is compared to the previous quarter since I've been recording this information. Also right here, percent change over this quarter. Strongest I've ever seen uh, since I've recorded this data. The best I've seen prior to this quarter was uh, fourth quarter 2018, uh, 32 and a half, 32 and a quarter percent growth uh, year over year. So very extremely strong growth here, uh, very positive. Okay, we have 85 percent of the index has reported earnings so far, or at least that I have updates from. There are a few others that I believe have already updated, but I just haven't gotten to them yet. Um, yeah, I, I update them as the data becomes available to me on my Ameritrade account. Um, I could also go digging through every company's investor relations site and, you know, their whole earnings schedule to uh, keep more up to date. But it, it's a few companies here and there that I might miss or, and then end up doing another week or something. It's not really a big deal. We're just trying to get a general idea uh, what's going on here. 
So very another uh, everything here is very positive. Okay, what's coming up over the next five weeks for earnings? This is what we have. Uh, I have only 17 companies tentatively scheduled to report this coming week. And I'll show you what those companies are on the next slide. Um, it'll go up to about 21 companies uh, next week. And then 15 companies in the last week of May. And then the first, uh, first week of June, we'll only have five tentatively scheduled. And second week of June, only two. So, uh, and, and this is a, a much different, much lower number compared to the 100 plus that we've been seeing the last two or three weeks. Uh, like last week, I think was up around 155 or somewhere around there. I, I didn't even keep track. Uh, I do know there were quite a few companies that I was not normally, I was not originally expecting to report until next week or later that actually have already reported their updates. Uh, so I actually recorded more than I thought I would this last week. Okay, this coming week, these are the companies that I'm tentatively looking at to report updates next week. Um, as you see here, I've got Simon Property Group. I don't have a good earnings update date for them yet. That's a real estate investment trust. Um, they don't have an updated their earnings yet. And I don't know what their exact date will be. I was, it was tentatively going to be this last week, though. Uh, but it's coming soon, I'm pretty sure. Uh, same with Eversource Energy. Uh, I don't have good information on them. I think they've already updated their earnings, but I just haven't. I just don't have the um, correct data to work with to update my information on them. Otherwise, uh, now mainly want to look at the market caps. Uh, I tend to like to point out the larger companies with at least $100 billion market caps that are expected to report this week. As you see, there are only two of them, and they're at the end of the week. Uh, Applied Materials, or AMAT, and uh, the Dow Jones constituent, the Walt, yeah, Walt Disney Company, is the, the other one, at $335 billion. So let's, uh, this is all we have reporting this week for earnings. Uh, so, you know, definitely a much slower week, both in terms of total number of companies and uh, companies with at least $100 billion market caps. Now, right, looking at bond yields here, again, it's always noise. I'm just going to go real quickly over this. And I just want to give you kind of a basic idea of what's going on with these yields. Um, again, watch some of my previous videos or posts, uh, both on YouTube or in the Facebook groups, for more information on this. Um, I think the hashtag bond yield or bond yield curve in at least the main group uh, could give you some insight into this as well. Um, basically, just want to get kind of an idea what direction all of the bonds in general are doing. And then moving on to this, uh, this would be the 10-year Treasury note, uh, what its yield curve is looking like right now. Um, so I can, all right. Uh, I'm going to move myself out of the way so you have a better view there. All right, so as we saw here, bond yields uh, reached a peak back in uh, the end of March, and then they settled down back to uh, about the mid to high 1.5% uh, range, at least for the 10-year Treasury note, uh, in the latter half of, uh, of um, April. Went back up to uh, just below 1.7%, uh, but it has since been uh, back down. It looks like it might be hitting a pivot now. Um, I'm not sure why there was so much volatility there, but there was a huge spike up right here in the uh, about 1.48% range, somewhere in that neighborhood. But uh, generally, it's, it looks like it's hovering over here in the upper 1.5. This is a what you call a price pivot. Uh, when you're looking at, when you're doing technical analysis, that's something you want to pay attention to. Uh, a lot of people don't pay attention to that. I usually just look at a, a lot of oscillators or, uh, uh, or uh, you know, moving averages and things like that. But I've seen a lot of times where prices stop and go back the other direction at price pivot points like what you see there. Now, uh, there have been previous times where the price paused or reversed direction at a certain level. So it's something to watch for there. Uh, bond yields could go back up this coming week. Um, but that's just a little bit of speculation there, what could happen. 
Uh, generally, stock prices go in the same direction as bond yields, but not always, because I believe in this area when they were freaking out over, well, when's this going to stop? Uh, stock prices actually were struggling in, in that area. Uh, generally, though, stock earnings, uh, stock prices tend to go in the same direction as bond uh, bond yields until they reverse course. All right, looking at the bond yield curve again, uh, we're looking for inversions. Now, something else here. This is why I have this information in here. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm putting this data in here to see how close we are to having certain types of yield curve inversions that get looked at a lot by investors. Um, we're nowhere near any kind of inversion happening, and that's usually a very early indicator of uh, of a recession that could come. As I mentioned before, about nine to twenty four months into the future, once the two versus ten year yield inverts, or uh, Returns negative, generally 9 to 24 months after that is when we might expect to see the, uh, a recession come, if one does at all. Doesn't mean one will come, it just means there's a better likelihood one will come within that time frame. Um, and it doesn't mean the stock prices are going to start collapsing right then and there. It just means that, hey, it's it's a warning sign, but there's no warning there at all right now. It's Everything looks uh, very good and very healthy there. All right, so the bond yield curve here is basically just a visual representation of what I was just trying to explain here. Uh, Short-term yields, when they get higher than these long-term yields, or particularly the middle-term yields, uh, that's what that's those are the kind of inversions that we're looking for. Uh, nothing of that sort going on right now. Actually, looks very much uh, like a recovery to growth kind of uh, curve at the moment. Nothing to be worried about. Now, looking at TSP prices, uh, up the most up to date. Uh, yeah, S Fund had a bad week. Yeah, it did better on Friday, but yeah, as you see, it was lagging all of the other funds the rest of the week, unfortunately. And I'm currently 100% uh, in S Fund myself, and we'll have some more information on that uh, coming up here for those of you guys who are in a swing trading group. Uh, my information and Deb's information can always be found in the main announcement post. Hashtag main announcement or in the event section. Uh, Deb posts her stuff, her in for her updates only in the main group. I tend to post mine only in the swing trader group, although both, but uh, I do tend to update the information in both announcement posts. Yeah, but, uh, the announcement posts of both groups. Uh, it's just, yeah, we're trying to keep people focused only on whatever their strategy should be or, uh, or is for that particular group. So. Uh, you don't tend to see me posting any information on my uh, on my uh, inter interfund transfer activity in that group, uh, at least not anymore. All right, for the month, as you see here, S Fund was the only one down for the month. Um, yeah, iPhone was actually uh, the strongest performer this week. That's kind of surprising. Uh, so that's, that could give you guys some argument for putting money in the uh, iPhone. Uh, I'm still. Uh, leaning against doing that myself but uh, that's at least if you have money in that fund it's it's going it, it looking like it's uh, in a position to do something more for you than what it's had a history of doing and also over this last uh, over the, the calendar year and in the last week s fund was actually the top performer still but with the struggles earlier this week up until friday uh, c fund is taking back over the lead all right, for those of you guys in the Swing Trader group, uh, you want to know how the S fund is doing versus C fund since the date of my last inter, inter fund transfer or IFT. Uh, the last IFT I did was on 5 March to, from 100C to 100S. I'm waiting for this 100S to get uh, this S line, the blue line, to climb back above that red uh, that red line there before I make my next move back to C fund. Uh, not looking good right now, but again. Using this strategy, I can be as patient as I want to be. Sooner or later, this will catch up. It's just a matter of how long am I willing to wait. Uh, I don't have to sit there and try to chase uh, the C fund. I can stay in S fund, and eventually, uh, at some point in time, S funds, uh, the, the blue line will eventually get above that red line, and at that point in time is when I can make my move. Okay, let's go to the manufacturing data now, or, um, or uh, inter yeah. Institute for Supply and Management, or the U.S. economic data that comes out every month. Uh, this is a little bit of a blurb from the, let me move this again so you can see the website. 
I highly recommend you guys go to the site and do a lot of reading on it yourself. Uh, if you do, especially if you invest outside DSP and you want to know what's going on with different sectors and industries, there's a lot of good in, uh, information in here, a wealth of good information. I'm just going to just just uh, just a few little icebreakers here, and that's it. And uh, hopefully get some of you guys to actually visit this site and uh, enlighten yourselves even more based on the, you know, by visiting their, their site and reading more yourself. Um, but particularly, I want you to read this paragraph here. I'm not going to read all the way through it. I'm trying to keep this reasonably short. So just pause the video if you need and go ahead and read it. Or even better, go to their website and read it on their website. This is the report on business, um, the current report for the uh, Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI, which is the manufacturing half of the economy. All right, so all of the six biggest manufacturing industries registered moderate to strong growth in April. That's, uh, again, that's a good positive sign. Uh, manufacturing performed well for the 11th straight month. Okay, now let's move on. Again, um, because I don't want to take too much time reading stuff that you can just go ahead and pause and read and not have the video accessibly long for those of you guys who just want kind of a cliff note version of this. Okay, respondents, uh, basically these are companies that respond to these surveys that get put out by the ISM. By ISM. Uh, again, you can get a kind of a consensus or uh, impression of uh, how, how optimistic or pessimistic or concerned, whatever, uh, a number of the, the respondents are as far as their businesses are concerned and the overall economy. Uh, a lot of good information here. This actually looks generally very positive. There are some issues to work with and uh, work on, but there are always going to be some issues to look at. And overall, this looks very good. Very strong demand, but there are supply problems is uh, the shortest way I can sum that up for you. All right, so I'm, I'm, I have these numbers, um, the ISM PMI data. These are uh, not the exact same numbers as what ISM puts out themselves. I have them basically... Uh, uh, adjusted for what percent, uh, what number above or below 50 they are instead of, the, so it's at least a little bit more of an under, uh, a little bit easier for you guys to understand. Well, what, because most people who look at this data, they don't understand that 50 means uh, exactly half the companies are reporting growth and exactly half are reporting contraction. So if I put this into positive and negative numbers and then color code them as well, I think that might help you guys have a little bit better understanding of how strongly positive or how strongly negative or whatever uh, each of these categories is. Uh, move myself out of the way so you can see the headers here. As the Purchasing Managers Index or the overall man uh, manufacturing uh, number here. Um, very strong overall here, you see. Uh, last month is, was the strongest I've seen in a few years here. Uh, still 10.7 uh, or 60.7 technically. It's a very, still a very healthy number. You see here a lot of uh, brighter green here as well. That's again, it's another very positive sign. Uh, customer inventories is an area of concern, though. As I mentioned, supply is a big problem right now. If you look at the previous slides, uh, those kind of help sum up what exactly is going on on that on that end. All right, but all 18 of the different sectors uh, report uh, are reporting growth right now. Uh, not not one single sector is reporting uh, contraction. So all very positive again. Um, so those of you guys who are risk averse, maybe this, uh, maybe some of this information you see here will assuage some of your fears and get you to understand this is not the time to be um, afraid to be in stocks. This is the time to be very strongly in stocks, and then you know put some of your money into bonds later on when uh, when the growth slows or when there's more reason to uh, justify having the money in there. All right, this is the services data. Same company, uh, ISM, who puts out this information. Uh, again, I'm just going to give you um, just the basic here. Just pause the video again if you want to read through this or skim through it. Get kind of a basic idea uh, what the consensus impressions are and all that. And then we'll move on, okay? All right, again, here is the services data. Uh, the numbers basically put into um, 
uh, layman speak or a little bit more layman terms for you guys than what you're, you're going to see on the actual reports. Uh, main thing here again, color coding. Now, the, the darker green it is, the more positive it is. The darker red it is, like in April of 2020, the more negative it is. We want to see dark, uh, bright, uh, dark green, and we are seeing dark green right now. That's, that's all positive. Uh, the only negative we see down here is inventory sentiment. Again, that's a supply issue. Uh, something else here I do want to talk about, though, that I didn't really cover is new orders component. Okay, new orders and then backlog and then new export orders. Those are your main three demand indicators there. And ideally, you want to see um, green on all of those, and which and that is the case. Uh, new orders here, very strong, looks very good. Uh, so that's 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 healthy demand there. Uh, backlog, want to see backlog of orders, but you don't want it to be too uh, too big a backlog because when there's too large a backlog, then uh, the demand starts to go yeah, either starts to go away. Uh, basically from apathy or they start to look for alternate sources for what they need. Now, whether it's price issues or just lack of supplies, sometimes uh, sometimes whoever's buying whatever it is will look for alternative sources for what they need or want. And, and that could be a, a harm, uh, could be a somewhat harmful to the uh, U.S. economy if that goes on. But, so we do want to see uh, backlogs. I just don't want it to be too excessively strong and then sharply uh, drop off. Okay, new export orders. Again, that's uh, more exports. That's another sign that the foreign economies are also very strong. But also could mean other things like the U.S. dollar might be cheaper relative to foreign currencies, which means that it's U.S.-based goods and services and products, whatever, are more affordable for uh, for foreign uh, consumers or businesses and yeah it helps increase our supply and increase our gdp all right so that should be uh, kind of it for a nutshell on the demand issues with, uh, with this information you can go back to the other slide on your own if you want to, uh, um, to look at those particular components on the uh, manufacturing side all right looking at the the countries in the eF index or uh, this is the yeah the EAF index or EAFE is a, a stock index that's managed by a company called MSCI. Now that is the index that basically the the I fund the TSP's I fund follows to an extent. Now, the I fund invests in two different things. It invests one in uh, in this uh, exchange traded fund or that use uh, uses a ticker symbol EFA, and that yeah that um, that ETF follows the MSCI EF or EAFE index. Uh, it also invests in the foreign currencies of all these different countries here. Uh, Jen, but what I really want you to guy, uh, what you all to see here is how strong the growth or contraction is across all these countries, and then how much influence each of these countries has on the I fund. You don't see China in there. You don't see India. It's because they're not part of it. Uh, they have, they might have some indirect relations to, uh, to that, to that I fund through their trade relations with these countries, but it's these countries specifically that you want to pay attention to if you want to know what's going on with the I fund. So, as you see here, Japan has the strongest influence on I fund at 24.5 percent, uh, followed by the United Kingdom at 16.7, and then France at 11.5. Um, you see here, it's getting more. More strongly positive. Uh, back in November, we were at. Now I wasn't keeping the data last year. I kind of got a little negligent there. But important thing is here. I got all the data from November on. Uh, these just are not available yet. Uh, the uh, Israel and uh, New Zealand tend to be the more behind the eight ball and um, keeping their uh, keeping the world updated on their their manufacturing data. But Looking very strongly positive, uh, near uh, getting close to 60% uh, of the basically of everybody positive. Uh, that's very strong growth, and so it's going to justify uh, better I fund performance. Whether it'll perform uh, uh, so well compared to CNS funds, that remains to be seen. 
very, very difficult to value that index because it's not just um, the ETF and all the, all the earnings of the companies that are in that ETF, but it's also the foreign currencies of these comp uh, of all these com uh, countries here. Um, so it, it makes it really tricky to, um, to know what to really expect from IFA. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this week's report. Uh, again, I may have some more data or some kind of update for you guys next week. I don't know. won't be really much. It's, it's a lot slower now um, this coming over the coming weeks for the remainder of the quarter as far as earnings are concerned. But uh, I don't know. I might put something out there about some of the economic, economic data or something. So, well, we'll see. Um, you guys all have a great weekend or enjoy what's left of it. Uh, happy, happy Mother's Day to all of you guys who are uh, you ladies who are mothers. And we'll see you guys uh, next week. Thanks.